Transportation technology has come a long way since the days of the Wright brothers and Henry Ford. We can get places faster and easier than ever before. But what will become of travel in the future? Inventors have their own ideas on what forms our vehicles may take. And if this inventor has anything to say about it, perhaps one day soon we'll be seeing something like a 200 mile per gallon, 80 mile per hour vehicle in our driveways. And if seeing is believing, then you've got to believe in the lean machine and its genius inventor, Frank Winchell. Well, I spent a lot of time uh, thinking about it uh, in bed and on the toilet and in airplanes and things like that. The lean machine wasn't all Frank thought about. While serving as vice president on General Motors engineering staff, he acquired over 50 patents to his credit and was named the most significant man in the automobile industry by Road and Track magazine. But it was the invention of the cambering vehicle that proved most vital. This three-wheeler was the grandfather of the lean machine. A conventional automobile is stable in cornering because it has such a wide base. But if you're going to make a nice, neat hole in the atmosphere and get all the mass out of the vehicle that you possibly can, then you want it very, very narrow. Uh, when you do that, it makes a narrow base. So when you go around the corners, it wants to tip over. It was with the help of Mother Nature that Frank conquered this problem. Everything that I know of that moves in the air, uh, in the water, or on the land with any speed at all, leans into the turn. Birds and uh, fish and uh, uh, tigers and, and guys going around third base all lean in the turn. Otherwise, they would fall over. Along with being the only truly new road transportation vehicle of this century, the lean machine just might be the most practical. So there is a real need for a single occupant vehicle, one that's really efficient, uh, very lightweight, makes a nice clean hole in the atmosphere, very low aerodynamic drag, good fuel economy. Consumers seem to agree. Yeah, if I found out there was a car that would give you 200 miles to the gallon, I'd buy one. If it had the range, I could travel back and forth over 15, 20 miles, I might do it. steps involved in turning the lean machine from a great idea into a great product. At GM's technical center, various experts were consulted. All the steps from drafting to styling to test driving took a total of seven years. I don't think I've ever done anything by myself. And we had some really good guys, a uh, small group, just four guys uh, that are extremely capable and very knowledgeable. Jerry Williams, project manager at the Tech Center, was one of those men. And according to him, working with both the lean machine and Frank were often very demanding. Well, we had to perform a lot of magic, you might say. Sometimes we had to pull a rabbit out of the hat. But all of the hard work eventually paid off. The lean machine was ready to meet even the most skeptical critics. They'll be surprised, possibly apprehensive, uh, when they see this, most young people see it are really enthusiastic. A major concern about the lean machine was the safety factor. Would it be safe to drive? Well, certainly a lot safer than a motorcycle. In the course of the various arguments I've had with people, I have said that uh, nothing created by man or God except the automobile is designed to survive by crashing. God had designed a duck to go into the brick wall at 30 miles an hour, he'd never get off the ground. Frank's friends at GM set out to prove him wrong. Upon his retirement this spring, they presented him with a crash-proof duck. And it even has an airbag, and it's uh, inflated in this manner. Though Frank gained much notoriety for inventing the lean machine while at GM, the vehicle will not bear his name and few will remember him as its creator. But this doesn't seem to bother him. If I had a, a shorter, more romantic name, uh, I'd feel pretty bad about it. But I can't imagine any kind of a takeoff from Winchell. 
And like most inventors, he has a keen eye on the future and a grateful eye on the past, acknowledging the importance of others before him as instrumental to his own work. I think the most incredible man in history is Leonardo da Vinci. I'd rank uh, Galileo and Newton pretty close. The laws of science and nature joined forces in creating the lean machine, and its efficiency and elegance have made it a realistic possibility in our lifetimes. Well, it's not for everybody, but it certainly, um, I think it would have its place in the uh, transportation system of not only the future, but today as well. The people at General Motors feel just as strongly about the lean machine's place in our society. They've already made plans to display the vehicle at Epcot, Disney's Town of Tomorrow, scheduled to open October 1st. Exhibiting the vehicle at Epcot may be the first step in the lean machine becoming the car of the future. And perhaps in that future, people will say about Frank Winchell what he once said about Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo was a, must be one of the most visionary men that ever lived. Now that's what I call a great inventor. He's not only helping us conserve fuel, but he's helping us move right into the future. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll have more of the game ranch.